boldly written at the entrance gate of a university in South Africa had the following words for contemplation. Destroying any nation does not require the use of atomic bombs or long-range missiles. It only requires lowering the quality of education and allowing cheating in examination by the students. Patients die at the end of such doctors. Building collapse at the hands of such engineers. Money is lost at the end of such economists and accountants. Humanity dies at the end of such religious scholars. Justice is lost at the hand of such judge. The collapse of education is the collapse of the nation. How sad. Whereas Akranga and Ongong in 2013 affirms that education is a necessary process through which young adults are equipped to lead productive lives according to their talents and interests. Through education, learners are not only taught, trained, and adequately guided to acquire relevant skills and knowledge, but also how to adapt to acceptable public life among other advantages. This process of teaching and learning called education is evaluated through examination at the end of the learning period. Examination not only serves as feedback for the trainer to ascertain the level of knowledge acquisition, but it also serves as a measure of knowledge retention by the trainee while motivating and helping learners to know their academic strength and weaknesses. But sadly, any misconduct or irregularity in examination process distorts this feedback mechanism, gives a false outcome of the learning process and this is regarded as examination malpractices. First reported in Nigeria in 1914, examination malpractice is regarded as deliberate wrongdoing contrary to official examination rules designed to place a candidate at an unfair advantage or disadvantage. Among the subtle means students use to achieve these unfair advantages are impersonation, giraffing, inscription, the use of mobile phones during examination, exchanging of answer booklets for not comparison, among others. Undoubtedly, examination malpractice leads to irreversible loss of credibility in a community, discouragement of students from hard work, low productivity and poor job performance and certificate racketeering. Its disadvantages affect all facets of the society negatively. Identified causes of this menace include fear of failure, craze for certificates, prayer on students to pursue courses which they have no aptitude for due to parental influence, overcrowded seating arrangements in schools, poor teaching, ineffective preparation by students, among others. Despite all efforts made by governmental and non-governmental organizations, examination malpractice is increasing geometrically in the country because the remote cause that necessitated the malpractice is yet to be addressed. Hence, societal re-engineering and orientation to revamp moral values is highly recommended. Less emphasis should be laid on paper qualifications and certificates, retraining and reassessing of teachers, appropriate recognition and remuneration of exam officials, promulgation and enforcement of examination malpractice prohibition laws as included in the Examination Malpractice Act 1999 and proper funding of the education sector. Development of any nation solely relies on its human resources and human resources are refined to be productive through education. Hence, 
eradicating examination malpractice which destroys human resource development should be taken as a full-scale wall. We therefore declare that examination malpractice is a crime. Direct or indirect involvement makes anyone a criminal. We can and we will end examination malpractices.